G'day everyone, it's Billy here from Dumble Young in the Wheat Belt region of uh, southern, southeastern, western Australia. A town called Dumble Young. I'm in my beautiful garden right now, guys. So I really appreciate you joining me. So, what we're going to do today, guys, is build a couple of our uh, beautiful frog and tadpole um, aquariums for to be placed around my garden. So, basically, outdoor aquariums so uh, yeah we've got one aquarium here and another one to my right and uh, just a selection of our uh, native grasses water grasses um, some uh, uh, melly roots etc some nice flat rocks some uh, ceramic pots uh, a selection of sand, gravel, and also uh, what we call blue metal, and uh, just some pieces of wood that we'll be placing inside the uh, aquariums. So uh, I've got about probably uh, four, four possibly five aquariums around my yard, guys, and uh, also probably um, I don't know around six p little ponds, six. So around six little ponds around my yard as well and also many many containers what contain tadpoles just for breeding purposes and so forth so we'll go for a wander in a minute and uh, we'll show you a quick uh, preview of my tadpoles we'll see some frogs uh, probably uh, the motorbike frog and uh, we'll show you the beautiful native uh, bulrushes what I've got growing in my yard just to uh, attract the uh, dragonflies for uh, breeding, um, insects, etc. And uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful garden I've spent around probably over 10 years um, trying to turn my little quarter acre block into a paradise. So it's just a never ending uh, project, guys. So hopefully one day someone who uh, lives in this property, when I kick the bucket, will really, really appreciate you know all the hard work I've done in uh, creating this beautiful paradise. Uh, so where do we start everyone? So um, we're going to do a fair bit of moving around today guys. It's going to be uh, a little bit uh, fiddly, maybe even a little bit frustrating for me because we're in a pretty cramped environment right now and we've got um, the, the uh, tadpoles and the water in insects behind me or behind the camera. So we'll be moving the camera all around my garden and uh, yeah, we'll show you the actual tadpoles and the water insects in a minute. So stay tuned guys. I can't see any comments because I'm a bit of a distance away from the camera but someone said hello to me so g'day whoever you are. I really appreciate you joining me. Uh, so anyway guys, so let's basically get started. So I'll move this stuff here and uh, what we'll do, what we'll basically do is just work on one aquarium and then when we finish that one we'll start on the other aquarium just to maybe the left of the screen or the right of the screen I don't know if you can see it or not, it's a bigger aquarium than this um, so basically what we're going to do is just fill it up with sand, rocks, the uh, melly root, terracotta, uh, <coughs> terracotta pots, uh, the grasses and once everything's inside the actual aquarium, we'll put the actual uh, water and the tadpoles in the aquariums. Okay, so we'll basically just build it from scratch. And as I say, we're going to be moving around my garden uh, to actually grab the tadpoles or just a few meters behind the camera there. So I'll move this stuff away, guys. Hopefully the table does not collapse. All right, so it's going to be a little bit frustrating, guys. Hear the beautiful birds and the sound of the wind. So basically we're going to move everything off the table and move the aquarium forward. Alright, 
side. Alright, so this is the aquarium guys, just a nice little aquarium that I found out one of the local rubbish dumps. All of the aquariums I've got have been found out local rubbish dumps. everyone so I'm no expert so <laughs> I'm just uh, trying to teach you guys just how to build a pot an outdoor aquarium like um, I do but like I say I'm no expert guys but it's really really easy so I'll just move that piece of grass there I hope you can all hear me okay all right <laughs> nearly fell over Oh, okay, so what we've got here guys is some beautiful yellow sand, okay, some nice yellow sand. Uh, you can just use normal sand from the from uh, white sand, yellow sand, any type of nice sand. You can probably buy it from the local hardware store. This is just a yellow sand what's um, around my area. So we're going to put some nice yellow sand in the bottom. Nice jar of yellow sand. Um, I've also got more sand to the left of the screen. So not not too much, guys. You don't want to put too much sand in the aquarium. But uh, it's not just. Uh, some nice gravel stones, a few gravel stones. About half. Just also some blue metal. But you know, it's up to you guys. Just use na natural rocks from your area. So this is just blue metal from my area. So about half, just use your imagination, so just mix, mix it in with the sand. So what we've got here guys is what we call in Australia Mallee Roots. So this is just a tree root of the Mallee tree. Um, I haven't got a Mallee tree in my yard but I will be planting them very shortly when I start growing trees. But just a, a nice clean Mallee tree or any type of root. But as long as it doesn't contain any toxins and it's been completely dried in the sun guys. So, it's, so the root has to be nice and dry, sun bleached. Um, and uh, so we'll chuck this one in. And guys, just in regards to using wood, don't use uh, the type of wood what washes up on beaches because obviously it's going to contain a lot of a high salt content and that'll just totally contaminate the water. I'm not too sure what that wood's drift driftwood or something like that. Uh, just washes up on the beaches from from the ocean beautiful piece of wood but just please whatever you do don't use any of the driftwood from oceans okay because it'll completely uh, kill your tadpoles the same goes with using beach sand whatever you do guys don't use beach sand or salt lake sand in a outdoor aquarium because it'll completely uh, like I say it'll just kill your tadpoles within um, 24 hours they'll be all dead 
Okay. So just get the piece of the nice tree root, however you like it. So that looks pretty nice, just like that. It's the perfect size. Okay, can you see that guys? I'll, we'll take the camera in a minute, we'll take the camera off the tripod and I'll actually show you a nice close-up of looking over the top of it. So, Probably the next thing I've got here guys is just an old ceramic pot So just a nice unpainted ceramic pot Okay, so we'll, we'll put that in and also I've got some nice also a broken ceramic terracotta pot So you can also use a broken terracotta pot as well um, Just make sure that it's probably not it's best not to put a painted terracotta pot in just a nice clean uh unpainted terracotta pot broken or uh, whatever it's up to you so also the good thing about using terracotta pots everyone is um, after a while on the actual pot will uh, algae or algae will form on the pots and it's an excellent food source for the tadpoles. The tadpoles absolutely love algae or algae and uh, you'll see them literally eating all of the algae off the, off the uh, edges of the terracotta pot. So a really good thing for a, uh, to create food inside your aquarium. So there's no particular design guys, it's up to you. So I've also got this beautiful old terracotta uh, tile or a, um, a roofing tile or something like that what my mate Ryan gave me. So I'm also going to put this in guys. You can put uh, a couple of flat rocks in if you like, you know, or any type of rock, but you just uh, just be careful guys. Just a nice, nice clean rock. Once again, it'll end up getting covered in algae uh, and so forth. So, all right. And also, the next thing you want to do, um, probably after you put the water in, is find a nice piece of wood. Okay, so you got a nice piece of wood. So the actual, um, any frogs what actually live in the water or jump in the water can actually get out of the aquarium. Because believe it or not guys, if a frog gets into a water, a body of water and it can't get out, that frog will drown. Alright, it doesn't matter what type of frog it is, um, even a frog what lives in the water, if it can't get out of the water, eventually it's going to drown. So make sure you've got a really good escape route for a frog or any other type of animal what, what might fall in the water, like a uh, lizard or a gecko, um, anything what might live in your garden, you know, like a, even a little bobtail lizard. I've got bobtail lizards what live in my yard. So just a nice flat piece of uh, uh, wood, pine, make sure it's untreated, it hasn't been painted or anything like that guys it's a nice clean dry unpainted unvarnished piece of wood all right um, all right the next thing we got is a, just a nice little uh, water plant all right I've got a couple here So what I'm going to do guys is just leave this water plant in the actual pot just so the roots can get, 
get established inside the pot and uh, after a while once the roots are established I can take that uh, make sure uh, grass out of the pot and just break it up in the water and it'll um, establish itself in the water okay so it's really really easy so I've got another one here guys just a nice native bulrush basically it for that aquarium guys it's basically finished this aquarium um, so we'll grab I'll walk around we'll grab the camera and we'll show you what it looks like on the inside and uh, then we might either um, we might go for a walk around my garden come back and um, may either put the tadpoles in uh, the, in this one and then we'll work on the next one all right so I'll just walk around guys because I can't get through I'll take this off. Oh. Alright guys, so it's really really easy. I'll take the camera off and we'll show you what it looks like from above. Alright guys, thank you so much for uh, watching. I'm going to turn the camera around. So basically this is what it looks like guys, without the water, without the tadpoles. So it's really, really easy. So just have a, a pot, a nice native grass right there. You can see the uh, ceramic uh, or terracotta pots. And the tadpoles can swim in and out of that. There's an escape route for any um, frogs or lizards, etc. that fall in. As I say, just make sure the uh, it's a nice kind of flat piece of wood. This isn't the best. When I say flat, also I mean uh, a nice thin piece of wood. You don't want nothing too bulky. And it's just the perfect size, this one. So and on a really good angle. And also a good thing about this, guys, is the frog can sit up here and uh, sunbake or just sit there and capture insects. Um, just a nice little melly root here. The other, uh, bro the other bulrush down there, and the gravel, and the blue metal on the bottom, etc. Yellow sand, the uh, ceramic tile right there. Uh, once again for algae, etc. to grow on. The tadpoles will literally lick that off or eat it off. And uh, yeah, so we'll go for a. That's it guys, so we'll go for a bit of a wonder. This is the next one I'm going to do. Um, so also around my yard guys, I've got plastic containers full of uh, tadpoles. They're just temporary things until I get my aquariums, etc. and other ponds set up. Um, so right here guys, it's just a, 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 a little pond full of uh, tadpoles. You don't really see them under the water amongst all the grass but as you can see it's a really dark color the reason it's a dark color the water is because of this piece of wood the tannin inside the wood makes the water go dark okay so that could um, easily happen to uh, your aquariums just be very careful of uh, putting certain pieces of wood like this is a piece of bark off a tree and uh, it's turned into a, like a purplish blacky color but the tadpoles still live in there and uh, you know it doesn't really harm them but just be careful the type of bark you can put in the water because uh, obviously if it's like a toxic bark it's probably going to poison them try and use a bark what's native to the area like a eucalypt or something like that let me just see it guys so you can see the this is a western uh, western toadlet or a bleaching toadlet tadpole 
just a small, very, very shallow uh, water tadpole. And uh, that'll turn into a little tiny frog. And there's more in there. I don't know if you can see them. There's not many tadpoles in there, but... but yeah, just a shallow water tadpole. Western toadlet or a bleaching toadlet, unsure of the exact species, and I've got more here. And also, so these are just temporary plastic containers, guys. Like I say, until I get my other fish ponds established and so forth. I've also got these beautiful old terracotta plumbing pipes, and these are just for the frogs to actually live in, mainly during winter, etc., to uh, when they hibernate. Just a perfect uh, place for the, the uh, frogs to live in. I've got heaps of uh, those nice terracots, hollow logs and heaps of rocks all around my garden. Ponds and native trees. Um, so here's a better example of the using the uh, uh, the the uh, tree bark, how the water goes into a funny colour is from the tannin inside the bark. So the tannin is also used by people uh, for making special dyes, like dyeing clothes and fabrics and so forth. They'll use a piece of bark or a, um, tree leaves, etc. And they'll make dyes just from the tannin inside the, the leaves, the bark and other materials. Once again, it's just a temporary plastic container. Alright guys, I can see a frog, so this is one of my favourite ponds. I've got it covered guys, I've got to have this wiring just in case my magpie falls in. Even if he did fall in, he'd, he'd probably uh, safely escape, but it's just a safety thing. Um, you can just see it, this is a motorbike frog. Right down there, it's a big one. A beautiful motorbike frog. So, and he's sitting out there right now, just probably basically guarding his tadpoles, his uh, babies, and also catching insects for food. So that's a uh, a motorbike frog, one of the tadpoles that we'll be uh, putting in an aquarium today. Also, uh, guys, just be very careful of uh, using galvanised containers for breeding uh, tadpoles and so forth. The galvanised metal will actually poison the, the tadpoles or fish. So this is a galvanised container. What's just had a fresh batch of tadpoles um, in them and I've just basically rescued all of the tadpoles to save them from being poisoned in the water. It's just a, basically an outdoor native grass feature and as you can see more terracotta pots or um, plumbing pipes and so forth bricks another plumbing pipe here for frogs to live in and this is one of my outdoor aquariums guys so I'm going to warn you they won't the ponds won't stay clear forever you know it'll take about probably six months until they start getting uh, algae growing on the sides of the uh, aquariums so you can just see here all the algae just inside and the, it's all food for the uh, tadpoles and it's a tadpole right there and there's a water bug or something but yeah there's a I don't know how many tadpoles are in this one I'm just trying to. Um, also, guys, when you just say, for example, you have 200 tadpoles in an aquarium, there's a good chance you're going to lose about half of them or even three quarters of them. So, I'm just going to try and fix my phone, guys. The reason being is. Uh, because other tadpoles will eat them, um, predators, etc. Other frogs will eat the tadpoles. 
so they haven't got a you know a very uh, big chance of surviving in an aquarium or even in the wild because also birds will get them etc so so this is just an example of one of the old aquariums I've got on display in my garden so don't forget guys it will um, not stay clear forever okay um, Here's a little, another temporary um, container, just basically for uh, breeding tadpoles and growing a nice native grass and all these beautiful tadpoles are just hatched in the last couple of weeks and they're motorbike frogs. So they're all motorbike frog tadpoles guys. Alright, we'll go for a walk and um, so this is another one, but I, another big aquarium one I'm kind of working on. I need to repair it guys, it's got um, a bit of broken glass on the actual bottom. So I need to get some waterproof silicon and actually fix this one and turn that into an outdoor tadpole pond as well. Alright, so we'll go for a bit of a walk guys and I'll... Um, Offer some more tips. My yard's pretty messy at the moment. We had a fair bit of rain last night, and all my tree, all the leaves are on the ground, and everything, guys. So here's a 44-gallon drum. It's an old food safe container. Oh, I don't know. I had some type of food in it, but it was a food safe 44-gallon drum. And this one here's also got tadpoles in it, but they're hard to see. I've got a lot of uh, tadpole areas guys, there's another little one down here, an old trough with a few tadpoles, not many, water snails, well, here's a water snail right here guys, so unsure of the species, uh, everyone, it could be an invasive water snail, I'm not too fussed about it guys, because it's only in my yard, it's not going to go anywhere else, and these are everywhere, all around the Great Southern and Wheat Belt region, those type of snails. And inside this one, it's just basically the Western Toadlet tadpole. You can just see one right there. Shallow water tadpole. And, uh, there's another pond there, guys. I can see a big frog under the log. You see it right there, another motorbike frog. So that's uh, just another one guarding his baby tadpoles, etc. Just a, another motorbike frog. I've got a, quite a few different species, guys, but it's mainly a motorbike frog what's out at the moment. I've got burrowing frogs and um, win winter frogs, they're hibernating at the moment. Um, summer frogs. Anyway, I just saw another frog. And this is a beautiful motorbike frog here. They change colours, they all come in different, you know, like camouflage colours and so forth. Um, see that one there. So also I think that I might have uh, an Esperance frog in this area, um, in my from the Esperance, about 500 kilometres from this area, called the, uh, the I think it's a spotted thigh frog. So it's very, very similar to the motorbike frog, the spotted thigh frog. I might be wrong with the name, guys. I always make mistakes. It looks exactly like the, uh, the motorbike frog, except for it's got spots on its thigh. That's oh, a beautiful looking frog, that one. And all of my ponds too, guys, they're all just made basically from plastic inserts. So you can just see the plastic in the, in the background there. So the reason being, guys, I don't want to have concrete, you know, you, they end up getting cracks in them. Um, it's a lot of work to have a concrete pond. Like I say, you get a crack in it, a tree root might 
put a crack in it, anything, you know, a rock might fall and crack it. But these plastic inserts, they just seem to last for basically, uh, you know, years. I, I've never had a leak in any of them. And uh, so you can get these from Bunnings, uh, hardware stores and so forth. Just the old round, square, uh, plastic uh, inserts. So... And uh, right here, guys, a uh, bobtail. It's a bobtail. So I'm baking. So this is, if DJ watches this, this is my uh, um, native irises, what I found the other day at the uh, wage and rubbish dump. So just a beautiful area. What I've created for burrowing frogs and bobtail lizards and other frog species to live amongst this grass. It'll get a lot thicker, guys, so um, it seems to be getting really nicely well established, the native iris. And as I say, guys, a lot of my uh, those plastic containers, I'm working on other ponds. So these two kitchen sinks right here, these are all concrete sinks, these will eventually be turned into nice outdoor ponds using the old concrete laundry sinks so yeah so yeah so I've gonna have a lot of frogs and tadpoles in my yard guys this is another one for the native uh, the uh, western toadlet or the bleating toadlet just uh, full of Tadpoles. And as you can see, guys, just an example, you know, always had the uh, logs sitting above the water for uh, other frogs to sit on, escape routes for animals. This one's also got just a little bucket down there if it overflows. Um, so any, if any tadpoles fall, they'll fall into the bucket. Sometimes, like last time, we had heavy rain and it overflowed. And just a beautiful native uh, bird drinking area that my mate Ryan gave me. He's just left my hometown, Ryan. Um, and it's just got a nice native bulrush going in it. Haven't seen any frogs sitting in there yet, but I'm sure I will soon. It's a beautiful big concrete bird bath, basically. So anyway, guys, that's uh, I'll, we'll give a really nice tour of my garden soon. I've got other ponds, but I can't, probably can't even get to at the moment because of these uh, tubs here. These are the tadpoles that we're going to be planting today. But I've got a few others in here. So more of these, got about probably six, maybe eight of these old plumbing pipes for frogs to live in. So I've got them covered, like either with a terracotta pot like that or an, a flat rock, just so the frog can basically get inside the little crack there and live, live inside. Also a great place for insects, etc. to make homes. So that's one of my other frogs there, guys. That one's actually made out of a plastic 44 gallon drum. And that white pipe there is just for a, maybe a frog to live in. Um, and also, you know, just have heaps of nice rocks, melly roots and logs and hollows. And uh, so much more guys, just trying to create a nice environment for your uh, frogs, etc., to live in. Right here, my bloody cat's been walking on my beautiful native grasses, etc. What I'm growing, and he's just destroyed one. It's the worst thing about having a cat, guys. Besides, some just a beautiful tree here. What you know, the cat climbs up here and bloody knocks everything down. It's really, really frustrating, guys. Doesn't happen very often, but. So this is just an area of all native uh, trees and native grasses. Um, what I've, what I'm growing. Most of them, not all of them. There's not definitely 
is mainly the tree, I mean, sorry, mainly the native grasses. Um, will be getting planted in my yard. All of the trees will get planted out, um, at my mate Dale's farm or at that beautiful little watering hole what I've just did, done a video about. So I've got a fair few guys, there's a lot there, wildflowers, etc. And so yeah, all beautiful native uh, great just to um, encourage uh, places for my frogs and to live under cover and so much more guys and heaps of uh, bulrush as you can see so it's getting there my garden everyone but you know it's it is getting a bit pretty cramped you know so so yeah but anyway, so we'll show you these tadpoles. So this is the, uh, what I believe is a wheat belt frog tadpole. What I caught yesterday. I caught around 30, maybe 40 of them. Um, and right inside this little jar here is a motorbike frog tadpoles. And in here is all um, road boats, water bugs, etc. Um, and yeah, this is the colour of the water from that dam too, guys. So this is the colour the colour of the water. It's like a um, milky tea coloured water. And there's a one right there. So they're pretty big tadpoles. Anyway, guys. So what we will do now is uh, probably uh, we'll. Um, fill this one up with water and we'll put some tadpoles in it and uh, then we'll work on that one there okay so I appreciate you watching guys it's a bit frustrating having to move around my garden and that so anyway let's uh, get started guys and as I say in here I'll just show you these are all row boats uh, there's some water bugs there see them the beautiful water bugs and uh, yeah I just love the water insects as well um, it's, sorry um, dragonfly larvae there's one there there's a few in there actually see the dragonfly larvae They're like wriggling around so beautiful dragonfly larvae guys turn into dragonflies it's beautiful when you see the dragonflies flying around your backyard Okay, so it's going to be a little bit frustrating how we're going to do this. I've got buckets of water here, so what we might do, what we might actually do is uh, we'll fill up these buckets of water with uh, the uh, actual uh, water insects and so forth. I just don't know how I'm going to do it, guys. I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to do this. Just fix up my camera. All right, that's it. So also that green little uh, water weed you can see there, guys, is probably an invasive species. I'm not too concerned about it, but I can easily scoop that out. So, just do that. All right, then we'll We'll grab some tadpoles. Um, what we'll do, everyone, is we'll put those big uh, motorbike frog tadpoles in the big aquarium. What we're going to work on, we'll use these ones here. So, yeah. so we're going to put those in the uh, this aquarium over here. All 
Right, so I'll set up my camera and we'll pour that bucket of water in. So thanks for your patience everyone, it's like I say a bit fiddly. So here we go. And yeah, someone mentioned before the sound of the wind going through the casuarina tree, guys. I've got a beautiful casuarina tree right in, um, just to the right of the aquarium. I'll show you that before we finish, and that's what's making a beautiful noise, the casuarina tree. Right, here we go. Right, guys, so what we're going to do, guys, is actually move this aquarium to the spot where I'm going to uh, actually put it. So I'll move the tripod, fellas. Thank you so much for your patience. This is a bit frustrating, but I can't do much about it, guys. So we're going to move the tripod, then I'll carry the actual aquarium. To the spot where the aquarium is going to be located. So just stay there for a minute. Alright, it's just over there, guys. So in the middle of the screen is the aquarium that we just um, going to put the, uh, the, the water in right now. I can't, unfortunately, guys, you're just going to be able to see it from a distance. Um, but uh, I'll show you close up when I actually put the uh, water in, okay? It's just that there's just no room to put the tripod. Okay, so I'll grab the water. Well, I'm just going to go and grab some more water, guys.
right, and we'll grab the uh, camera. And now we'll put the motorbike tab poles in. So it's a bit uh, murky at the moment guys, so the water will settle right down and become nice and clear. But you can see all the uh, robots, a few water bugs. So it'll probably take a couple of hours until that water, there's a water bug. And here are the tab poles, so motorbike tab poles. Turn into a motorbike frog. And it's and there you are. So they'll take around probably 14 months, maybe even 18 months until they turn into proper frogs, guys. Um, so in the wild they develop into frogs a lot quicker but if you've got them in captivity they will take a lot longer to uh, develop into fully grown frogs so it looks pretty nice show you this side So they're only very, very tiny guys, but they'll turn into pretty big tadpoles. Alright, so we'll go and work on the next one, everyone. And this one, like I say, full of tadpoles, but they're kind of hiding at the moment. And don't forget, as I say guys, so what the aquariums won't stay clean. They'll gather algae, etc. on the edges. So after around 6 months, you know, 6 to 12 months, so it's just a risk you take when you're making an aquarium. Okay, so, but it is a really nice garden feature to have a beautiful aquarium in your backyard. So just two aquariums right there. And now we'll go and start on the big one. Alright. Um, so... Also guys, so this is going to have a lot more water bugs in here, so later on after the video I will transfer all of these water bugs um, into other ponds, maybe into the same um, aquarium, but it's just uh, a bit time consuming to go through, you know, to, to uh, actually capture all of them. But anyway, so let's uh, start on this next aquarium guys, so thanks for sticking with Right, so I'll set up the camera again. I can't see any comments, guys. The actual screen's facing the wrong way. So this is a pretty big aquarium, this one. You haven't seen my massive aquarium yet, which is going to be full of freshwater crayfish. We'll show you that one in a minute, guys. A really big aquarium, what I got from a roast dump. And that's going to be full of uh, freshwater crayfish. Not many, you know, maybe five, ten crayfish. And it's going to be an outdoor aquarium in my garden. Alright, so... So I'll go around the other side guys and we'll do it again. Alright, so sand. 
obviously just be careful rocks in the sand I just heard a rock hit the glass but this is a different type of sand a, a white sand You don't want too much sand in there, guys. There's a few leaves in there for my um, Port Jackson fig tree. I'll leave those in there. They'll decompose, be good food for my tadpoles. Uh, gravel stones, you don't have to put gravel in there either guys, it can be just plain sand, okay, so I'll just add it for the sake of adding it, as I say, you can just use plain sand or even gravel without the sand, it's up to you as long as you've got something in there for the, the roots of the native grasses to actually grow amongst, okay So just a native bulrush, it doesn't look the best guys, but oh, we'll take that one out, we'll put something else in, hold on, so we'll put a, the old melly root, so a melly root, uh, some terracotta, broken terracotta. The old terracotta, I think it's, it's some type of uh, tile, guys, a roofing tile or something, I don't know. Got a pot here. It's an old ceramic pot, unpainted. We'll put the native grass up the back and also also got another a native bulrush here uh, guys as I say we'll um, once the roots start getting established we'll literally take it out of the pot and plant the um, soil inside the aquarium. And I've just got maybe a piece of wood for an escape route, guys. I've just got this one for the time being. It's not the best, it's a bit too thick. But it's the perfect width for a frog to sit on. So just uh, something for a frog or a reptile to escape from if it falls in the water. Okay, so that's basically it. So we'll put the we'll put it on the table and we'll fill it up with water and put the tadpoles in. So that's basically it guys, it just, you know, you can design it any way you want, it's so easy. And that, like I say, that piece of wood's a bit too long, I'll probably end up uh, trimming that. Uh, a perfect uh, piece of wood be, would be a, probably half as uh, thin as that piece of wood, it's just a little bit too thick. And it's just a piece of Jarrah wood, an old floorboard. Alright, so we'll... we'll turn the camera around and this is where it's going to go right here
So as you can see, guys, try and get it as level as you can as possible. It's sitting on a nice um, piece of uh, thick plastic or rubber um, just to save it from being cracked on the bottom. Um, so just try and make sure that the aquarium is as level as you can get it. Um, it's actually sitting on top of an, of an old wooden chair, the aquarium. And uh, it's in the perfect spot, you know, it's in the shade most of the day and we'll get the afternoon sun. Okay, so the thing with uh, ponds, just make sure that the, the ponds or aquariums definitely do get, you know, afternoon sun or even morning sun, as long as they get some form of sunshine, guys. Uh, and uh, just be very careful as well as uh, the type of uh, trees um, what sit above the aquariums. You don't want a toxic tree dropping its leaves and so forth. that will end up poisoning the water. Okay, so basically I'll show you again my, this tree what's sitting above it. And we'll show you this beautiful casuarina tree. What you can hear, the wind blowing. Right, so... So that's what it basically looks like, guys. So... Just an old, you know, you don't have to use a terracotta pot. It's all up to your imagination, guys. You can use a, a nice brick or a rock. Um, so we'll show you some nice bricks as well. So just a nice note to a bulrush. This one here, I'll actually trim this with the scissors. I'll cut all these, this again here, through here. And new growth will start coming from the bottom. And once it gets established, I'll take it out of the plastic pot and put it in the actual aquarium but you can also just leave it in the plastic pot guys it doesn't really matter it's probably even just as good just to leave it in the pot that way the roots stay in a nice contained environment a nice clean piece of a nice clean piece of wood uh mallee root don't use anything like from the beach definitely don't use any beach sand because it just contains too much salt make sure you use nice clean sand uh, terracotta for algae to grow on and so forth and uh, we'll show you an example of these bricks what you can use so a nice little example of bricks you can put in your aquarium we'll show you this really big aquarium I'm going to work on soon for freshwater crayfish so right here guys is just a nice selection of bricks what you could put in your pond it's up to you um, with holes in them for the tadpoles to swim in and out of, you know, the dragonfly larvae to get into and all the water bugs to swim in. So this is actually an insect farm I'm working on at the moment. I'll do a video on this in the next few months once I get it all finished. Um, and there's another one on this side. So a nice insect farm what I'm working on, guys. If you do want to do what I'm doing, just make sure that the, the bricks have got a backing, okay? Just make sure there's a back behind the bricks that way it'll stop it'll make it nice and protected from the wind okay so they definitely need some type of backing behind the bricks for uh protection from the the weather and so forth but yeah insects will live in there you see the cobwebs you know it's not going to happen overnight guys it'll probably even take you know years until the insects actually find places and as I say around this area guys in the great southern region of West Australia most of the insects moths butterflies uh, all the native insect species basically you know most of them have been decimated by herbicides and pesticides chemicals etc and this is uh, just a great way to encourage insects into your yard but not spiders as well and this is a big aquarium I'll be putting some nice freshwater crayfish in in the near future. That's going to be a big project, that one, guys. All right, so, and these are the beautiful trees. You can hear the wind. That's the casuarina tree. So we're just sitting below that tree making the video. And that's a bird tower. So just a beautiful, my favorite, one of my favorite trees the casuarina tree makes a beautiful noise when the wind goes through the fine like uh, pine like needles these are the leaves really fine uh, needle like or pine like needle leaves 
and the wind goes through them, they make just a beautiful haunting noise. All right, guys, so we'll go and put these, uh, the tadpoles, the, uh, what is it? The uh, wheat belt frog tadpoles and water bugs in here. And all these apricots, guys, fully loaded, full of beautiful apricots. They'll be ready in a couple of weeks. Massive, the biggest ones I've seen for a long time. So many apricots, guys, that the tree just can't cope. The apricots are falling on the ground. And all this paper is just mulch, basically, what you can see. And as I said previously, I'll lose most of these parrot, sorry, these apricots to uh, parrots. So I'll only get probably about 100 apricots to eat if I'm lucky. You can cover them in bird netting, guys, but I just don't like bird netting. It's, uh, you know, animals get tangled up in the bird netting and it ends up killing bobtail lizards and snakes and birds and everything else. They get caught in the netting. All right, guys, so I'll set up my, uh, here's another bucket of water. So we'll grab some of these, we'll grab some more insects, some nice water bugs. So there's dragonfly larvae in there, uh, water snails, uh, rowboats. Uh, black water bugs Perfect food for the tadpoles as well and the dragonflies will actually uh, they, The dragonflies actually need that bulrush grass to survive So there's one right there. See it wriggling around. That's a dragonfly larvae So there's quite a few different types of bugs in there guys Many different types of species which is really great to see And those little round nuts there, they're the actual Casarina tree nut, the she oak tree nut. I don't know if you can see it at all. Anyway, let's put it in. And that water looks so nice, guys, it's almost tempting just to duck my head in. It's pretty warm right now. It's beautiful water to swim in this water. So that colour water is very common around this area because of the clay soil. The white clay soil makes it that colour. It almost looks like uh, you know tea, a cup of tea with milk in it. Right, so we've got a few insects in there, guys, and we'll grab, there's a uh, beautiful um, hovering fly. Can you see that? See the little hovering fly? That's a beautiful little thing to see, guys. They need water to survive. They'll hover just amongst, the, just uh, above the water and drink water. It's got, I think it's called a hovering fly. Probably not the correct name, but... So there you are, some beautiful wheat belt frog tadpoles. And they'll take about probably 18 months to turn into frogs. Maybe less, 12 months, they're pretty big tadpoles at the moment, not a year. And they're a burrowing frog guys, they live under the ground but they, they breed in the water during the uh, summer rains. So they had their tadpoles in the water. Some burrowing frogs literally had their tadpoles under the ground in uh, really muddy water under the ground. It's amazing how Mother Nature works. And all that, this uh, stalks here, this is off the bulrush. So we'll leave that in there, guys. That's all part of the food source of the tadpoles. So we'll leave that in there. And I'm also picking up probably, you know, grass seeds rush seeds etc you know as I say after this video I'm not going to be able to capture all of these tadpoles guys but uh, I'll uh, put them in that aquarium after the video is finished
and that's just that little net there. It's just a little net I found at a rubbish dump. Same as these beautiful meat tubs. So they're meat tubs used by a butcher for meat. These white and blue tubs. Used to use them when I was in the army. I was a cook in the army, guys, for anyone who wants to know. The best thing I ever did, guys, being a cook in the army. So, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And also, too, guys and girls, I'm thinking that a lot of these tadpoles right here, I'll probably end up relocating to um, another couple of areas around my area. Well, I haven't actually got this species living there. Areas what are struggling due to land clearing and salinity. And, uh, you know, just other areas that's getting harder and harder each year to find good tadpole spots, guys. So they get bulldozed and destroyed by farmers or um, mainly the local shire. The Shire of Dumbleyong will uh, destroy beautiful tadpole habitats. So there's quite a few in there right now. And that yellow thing's an apricot seed. An apricot's fallen in. So there's a lot in there, guys. So yeah, that's what I plan on doing, guys. I think it's mainly with the burrowing frogs. Because they're the ones that are going to struggle to survive in my yard. The burrowing frogs, the motorbike frogs and other frogs will, you know, have got more of a chance of survival in my yard. But these uh, burrowing frogs, it's where I live is uh, very, very hard ground. It's like very, very hard clay, gravel soil. But anyway, I will be creating some big deep holes in the very near future um, and creating some um, actual burrowing habitats for burrowing frogs. Hopefully it'll work guys. It's uh, just a matter of having the exact type of environment that the frogs need and I haven't, you know, like I say, I haven't really got the best type of environment for burrowing frogs. Alright, so we'll set up my camera again everyone and we'll pour these uh, tap you can see them go in the water so you can hear the beautiful birds so there we go guys hopefully we don't And while you're looking at that, guys, I'll go and get some more water, okay? So beautiful, fresh rainwater we're using, not tap water, but you can use tap water. A good tip too, guys, if you do use tap water, um, just let, just um, grab the tap water, put it in some buckets, and let the tap water settle overnight, okay? It doesn't really matter, you know, it wouldn't really hurt even if you put the tap water in straight away. got to understand, guys, these tadpoles are extremely tough. I've seen tadpoles living in areas con totally contaminated with oil slicks, uh, fuel, pesticides, herbicides. I mean, I'll find the video for you um, and I'll put it in the description box. It's out the Lake Grace rubbish dump. It's completely uh, contaminated with uh, oil and pesticides and it was just full of tadpoles and frogs. It's pretty amazing when you see, if you see the footage. But we're going to get some nice fresh rainwater and we'll top it up, guys.
Oh, here we go. So that's basically it everyone, really really easy, don't forget to put your piece of wood for an escape route for a frog or a tadpole. So I'll take the camera off and we'll show you. So uh, that's a beautiful uh, uh, wheat belt frog guide, so also probably another species in there. I've just seen a little tiny tadpole, so it's, you can just see it there. It might even be a wheat belt frog tadpole, or who knows. But, uh, yep, they'll survive it here, definitely. They'll love it, guys. And there's heaps of beautiful water bugs, mosquito larvae. The mosquito larvae will um, come out of this, out of the water and end up being, you know, metamorphosing on this piece of grass. The grass will end up kind of looking like that. Or like this type of grass over here. Here. We want to show you Nipper. There's Nipper the magpie. Wanders my yard. You hear the beautiful crickets. So that's basically it, everyone. There's heaps more tadpoles in there, water bugs. And uh, I really, really appreciate you watching and now it's time to clean up guys, as I say, it's a fair bit of work just to uh, set up these bloody live YouTube videos. Uh, but it's worth it guys, you know, it's all about a little bit of education, encouraging people to, to have tadpoles in the yard. Because, uh, you know, our environment's not in the best. Look at that one there, that's a beautiful big uh, uh, dragonfly larvae. Look, see it? And that'll, that also eats tadpoles guys. Look at that. So that's what I love to see, guys. Beautiful dragonfly larvae, just like that. And they will definitely eat tadpoles. So a lot of these tadpoles, you know, probably around, I'll probably end up losing 50% of these tadpoles to uh, predators, the dragonfly larvae, other tadpoles, definitely other frogs. And a good tip too guys, if you do have aquariums, definitely don't put yabbies or freshwater crayfish in um, tadpole aquariums or tadpole ponds because the yabbies will eat them, okay? When you start seeing tadpoles with their tails nibbled away, that's a sign that they're being eaten by yabbies or freshwater crayfish. Alright guys, so I appreciate you watching. And uh, I've got to go and uh, making a nice loaf of bread at the moment. It's just finished. I just heard the bell go off. So, yeah. And I've also got a little gecko in here that I'll be releasing soon. A gecko. Um, I think someone told me it's a velvet marbled gecko. It's actually under the rock somewhere, guys. But anyway, I found that in that army bag. My chalk pan, just so you know any new people watching chickens hanging my washing out today pretty uh, messy in my yard guys we had a big storm here last night so all the leaves are on the ground and worst thing about having all this sand guys all that yellow sand is this all the sand ends up on the veranda but I'll blow it away guys I've got a nice dust blower so anyway the bread's ready I'll just change hands, guys, because it's hot. It's just finished. Oh, no, I'm, no, I'm raving on, guys, but look at my videos and you'll see me making a loaf of bread. 
using Eden Valley chemical free flour. So that's it guys, so thank you so much for watching. I'll let that cool down and we'll put it on the rack in about an hour's time. And this is my little cooking area where I do all of my cooking, everyone. I don't cook inside, alright? I just use a gas stove and I don't even have an oven except for my like homemade type pizza oven there and a rocket stove and a campfire. A rocket stove I haven't used yet. So that's it everyone, I really really appreciate it. I'll get going because I've got to clean up now and uh, bring my washing in. And maybe I'll make another video about washing up these pots and pans. Okay, so that's it everyone. Uh, and just another pond just to show you. So really appreciate it, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Sorry I couldn't reply to any comments. I uh, saw, saw them coming through, but I just can't really read them when I'm talking. All right, guys, I'll take off now. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you later. See ya. Thanks for your support, everyone. Bye.